Throughout all my days playing Space Engineers, I've always heard the same thing, echoed from server to server, world to world. Don't overuse six-sided conveyors because they cause lag. But the question is, do they actually cause lag? Or is it just a rumor? What is up everybody, my name is Andrew and welcome to Space Busters, the Space Engineers series where we put things to the test to find out what is true and what is not. And in this episode, we're gonna be answering the age old question of do six sided conveyors or conveyor junctions cause lag? It's something that I've been told for a very long time, but I've never actually put to the test until now. So today, hopefully we're gonna, we're gonna answer the question by the end of this video. And in order to help us test this, we have this beautiful, awesome and amazing shell of a base. Um, you might notice that there are some cargo containers, and you might notice that there are some sorters that are blinking on and off periodically, and there are of course a couple of timers which are activating those sorters, uh, but what you might notice that there are not are conveyors, and that's for a purpose. So the way that we're going to test whether a six-sided conveyor causes lag versus its equivalent two-sided conveyor is we're going to run through a series of three different tests. The first test is a baseline test and it's going to be using only two-sided conveyors. So we're going to hook up two-sided conveyors everywhere in this base and we're going to measure the sim speed that we have at the end of that. Then we're going to reload the world and run our second test which is our six-sided conveyor test where we replace all of those two-sided conveyors with six-sided conveyors. We'll measure the sim speed after that one and compare it to the two-sided conveyor test and we'll be able to figure out if there's any lag caused by using the six-sided conveyors instead. Finally, we're going to run through an excessive six-sided conveyor test where we not only replace all those two-sided conveyors with six-sided conveyors, but we just throw conveyor junctions everywhere. We just put them everywhere on the base, hook up everything to six-sided conveyors, and we see if the excessive use of the six-sided conveyors causes more lag than the normal use of six-sided conveyors or the use of two-sided conveyors. So by comparing all three of these tests, we should hopefully be able to find out if using conveyor junctions or six-sided conveyors causes is lag. Oh, actually, real quick before we start, let me show you the environment that we're working with here uh, so that you can see, because uh, I haven't actually explained why we have all these sorters and these timer blocks. Um, so one of the reasons a lot of people were saying that, that the uh, six-sided conveyors cause lag when used excessively is because all these items have six ways that they can go when they're trying to get from point A to point B, whereas when you're using a two-sided one, there are only two directions. So it takes more computational power to, to figure out where an item can go from here to here if there's six sides per thing unless I mean uh, when compared to when there's only one way that they can go so that's the explanation for why people think that it causes lag uh, why do we have all these sorters well we want to keep the items moving from point A to point B we don't want them to be stagnant because we want them to be always searching for a way to get from point A to point B so that they can really be doing that computational uh, problem of trying to find that path um, if that is indeed what they're doing so uh, so that's why we have all these timers and sorters they're activating on and off and uh, and they're basically just keeping items continuously moving uh, we have four different areas where items could be moving so first we have this cargo container which could be moving to this cargo container so that's item or that's place number a then we have these cargo containers which are moving back and forth between these cargo containers so that's number two and then finally I know I just use a and two let's let's use Roman numeral three for this next one. Uh, we have these cargo containers which are going to come up and all the way around this super long path down to this one. Finally back around to the original stuff over there. And then we have this final little area which could take some of their materials and output them if it wants to. Um, also I've added six sided conveyors wherever they're required. So for instance, there's no way that you could do a two sided conveyor in these junctions. So I've just gone, gone ahead and added the six sided. Um, so that's the four. Finally, we have this giant test over here where we essentially have all these containers that are going to go through this sorter right here and then to those ones over to that, then all the way back through. So that's really going to stress test the six sided ones, I think, once we get to it. Um, so that's our environment. Let's uh, I guess let's see how the first test goes. Remember, this is our control. So our two sided one. Let's get it started. So I don't know how much of this I'm going to show, but for our two-sided one, all we really do is this. It's very simple. We're just kind of connecting the dots on all of these spots. Um, I've made it very easy for myself to know where I need to connect them. This one actually also needs a connection uh, right there. And then we need to connect this one right here. Um, we're going to use, so we're not going to use any, uh, any six-sided on the corners either. We're using these corner ones instead because those are uh, more efficient as the rumor goes. Uh, next we're going to do this crazy one, which is pretty much going to go like this. 
Oh man, I'm gonna probably go into speed mode in a second because I don't know how much of this I want to show. But, uh, but I just want to show you the basic layout of how this is going to look. Whoops. All right. And then we're pretty much just going to run this one all the way over here. And then turn up there. And then run it all the way back. So I have our sim speed showing this whole time. So we can see if it actually starts to dip at any point. Uh, currently, though, it's not, which is a good sign. Because, again, if it starts dipping on the first uh, test, that is a sign that something is awry. The idea is that this test will not cause... Oops, that's not what I want. The idea is that uh, this first test will not cause any problems whatsoever. Uh, and of course, I've ensured um, that I placed a couple of these in close proximity so that once we use the six-sided, it kind of really ramps up that uh, the amount that the computational power is going to need, be needed to search for a path. Again, if that is indeed what it's doing. A lot of people have said that this is something like this, the way it works is something that's left over from a long, long time ago. Um, from a time where Keen apparently wanted uh, you to be able to see items moving through the cargo containers, or the the, uh, the conveyors rather. I don't know if that's true, but that's just what some people have said. So let's just connect these dots right here. Again, a much, much simpler area right here. All right, we've almost connected everything and we should start to see materials moving back and forth. Looking at the sim speed, it is still normal. I haven't noticed anything. Um, let's go ahead and take a look in here to make sure we have materials moving back and forth. I can't actually see it, but that's where the, the sorter is. So let me actually go into these to see if we have things moving into these. I just want to uh, see if this starts getting pulled. Yep, okay, so things are moving. Ah, okay, yeah, so we are getting stuff into these. Okay, so we have movement over there. Let me just real quick check if we have movement over here to see if there's actually, if everything's actually flowing. Yeah, okay, so we also have our, our uh, ammo containers coming through here. All right, so with our current setup, with all this stuff right here, I don't notice anything in the sim speed. What I'm recording is, uh, for each of these tests, I'm recording a low value for sim speed, a high value for sim speed, and a subjective uh, test, which is basically, is it feeling laggy to me? I'm not going to rely that much on that, but I just want to take note of, of how it's feeling when I'm moving around. And currently, it's perfectly normal. Uh, now I'm going to go do this test right here. All right, so this test is also pretty simple. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna move these all the way over there. This is gonna take a long time, so I am actually going to speed through this. I actually wonder, can I do it by the line? I guess I can. Uh, I am actually gonna speed through this, so get ready for perhaps, perhaps a time lapse. All right, welcome back. I probably didn't do a time lapse because the uh, because it's very disorienting. Honestly, on my screen, seeing all these red lines just go crazy. But we are about to connect the first one right here, so pay attention to the sim speed, I guess. Get ready. Here it is. Sim speed dropped to 90 for a second. Uh, we're not really uh, actually worried about the temporary sim speed when you add something, because I think it always goes down. What we're worried about, though, is the sim speed as things are moving around. So let me, let me actually finish adding all these up and, uh, and we'll be able to see if the sim speed is affected. Which, honestly, it's a good sign that it's not doing much right now because, um, well, because I, I, I think, honestly, we're going to stay at 2.0 or at uh, 1.0 and 1.02. By the way, does 1.02 technically mean the game is going a little faster than it should? I think maybe that is what it means. Um, okay. Let's just go real quick verify that things are actually moving around. I want to make sure that stuff is perhaps inside here. Yep, things are moving around for sure. Uh, it, and it is a closed loop. Let me actually give you guys an overview. Look how cool that looks. Um, but again, when something is in here, if it wants to get to there, it only has one direct path, which is the, uh, the key component to this, I guess. Um, and it's the key thing that, according to the rumors, um, keeps this from causing a lot of lag. So, um, honestly, just sitting around, I'm noticing the low sim speed is 1.0 and the high is 1.02. Honestly, game does not feel any different uh, as far as the, uh, the subjective score goes. So, let's, um, let's real quick uh, mark that down on our paper. Then we're going to run back to the basic world and we are going to start this test over with six-sided. All right, welcome back, everybody. It's now time for the six-sided test, the one we've all been waiting for, the stand or the the, the junction conveyor piece. Um, this is the one that is said to cause a lot of lag. So we're, well, I guess we're expecting the sim speed to go down. We'll see what happens. Uh, let's. So you can see here, clearly we don't need to use these, but we are absolutely using them, 
And, uh, and actually, this is going to make this a whole lot easier, because we can just go yoink. I have no idea what that's going to do to the, uh, the sorting, by the way. Uh, when I was planning this, I actually did try to make it so that the sorting wouldn't be that affected, but I honestly still think it's probably affected. Um, okay, this one's going to be a lot easier. Look at this. Boom. That is one of the reasons people use these, as after all, is because they're a lot easier to, uh, to, to... Like, you don't have to worry about any connections or anything. You can just honestly place them, and they, uh, they just kind of work. Uh, and of, of course, they also offer redundancy. With the other system, if one of these, like this one, were down, you wouldn't need to worry because they're all connected to each other. They have that little bit of redundancy. Let's uh, let's go run through this connection now. Again, look how easy this is. Boom. Let's come around here. Boom. Check out those. Boom. Oops, that one did not work. Boom. Boomity. Boom, boom. Okay. There we go, that is the whole base connected. I actually fixed these problems before I did anything, so we should see that these are actually gonna get stuff this time. I hope. Um, let's just wait a few seconds. Well, I guess let's make sure this is getting some. And if that is, yeah, okay, so that's getting some. Let's, poor choice of words. Uh, let's let's check out this cargo container as well. Yep, that is also getting some stuff. Oh, I did not connect this. Whoops. Okay, everything is now connected. And the base is, of course, flowing. We can actually, I'm sure we could see this in here. Or maybe not, yeah, probably in there, actually. We should be able to see some stuff pulling in here in a second. Yep, there we go. So things are still flowing, and I'm not noticing any sim speed difference at all. We're still at 1.0, 1.02, standard sim speed. But I guess we're gonna have to look to the major test up there to find out if things really are as crazy as they, uh, as people say they are. Okay, so again, this is going to be really easy. All I'm going to do... Actually, I wonder if I can just do the whole line in one fell swoop. I think I probably can. That doesn't replace the... Uh... No, it doesn't. Okay, well, um, I'll be back after 12 lines, I guess. Okay, here we are. Moment of truth. I've built the whole entire... I guess you could call it like a coliseum almost. Like a big dome thing. Um, but we have not connected it yet. So this is the moment of truth. The second I connect this, technically... There will be more connection, more possible paths through this system for any given block than there are stars in the universe, probably. I I don't know. That, I mean, it's a lot of connections. Six to the power of six to the power of six. It's a lot. So the moment I connect this, if there should be, if there will be lag, there will be lag. Let's put it that way. Okay. Here we go. Making the connection. Come on. There we go. It is connected. I'm not seeing any lag. I'm seeing 1.0 sim speeds currently. I'm not feeling any lag. Game feels normal. Uh, let me go and run through this to make sure that I'm not that I'm not missing anything. Uh, actually, you know what? I should see materials coming in through these things uh, right here. Let's just wait a second, see if they actually do come through here or if I've maybe uh, missed something perhaps. Okay, I'm looking at this 12K. Let's see if it gets pulled anywhere. 12K. All right, I'll tell you what I'm not noticing. I'm actually not noticing any of this getting pulled. So I wonder if it's actually stalled out the... Uh, well, okay, that one's gone. There's none there. Let's find another one that has stuff and see if it... Actually, you know what? Here's what we're going to do. Let me real quick run through, turn these off. Okay, so currently this one right here is on 24-7. I want to see if it it's starts pulling these. Or if they're just like kind of stalled. We had one over here. Okay, no, that's empty. Ah, okay. Yes, it is actually pulling it. It was just taking too long, but it is actually pulling it. So now, if I go back to these guys, we should see that they are uh, that they are indeed pulled. Yeah. Okay, so we do have a connection. Everything is working as intended, and we notice no lag. There's no difference. There's no difference at all. It's still the 1.0. Okay. Well, this is kind of not what I was expecting. I was really expecting this to cause a lot of lag because I am using six-sided. Uh, conveyors like crazy and there are things continuously being pulled around the system even though sometimes they're getting stuck what I, what I do notice I don't I'm not gonna write this down because I oh no it is getting pulled I was gonna say some of the stuff is actually like getting stuck in here for longer than I expected but I am seeing things get pulled around so um, I mean what can I say it's still 1.0 sim speed game is running fine there's nothing like I mean, if it was going to cause lag, this would definitely cause the lag, right? 
I mean, I still have to do the final test, which is the exaggerated six-sided uh, one. So I am going to do that test. But honestly, I mean, if you're just looking for the answer, this probably answers the question. Um, let's run through and do the exaggerated test as well. All right, I've done about as much as I can to uh, to, uh, to go excessive. Like I've I have honestly just destroyed our base with a bunch of conveyors everywhere. Um, I've thrown more bases over here. I've thrown bases over there. I've thrown bases pretty much everywhere. Um, the sim speed has not changed, but I have noticed that I've lost a lot of frames. I'm getting 30 frames now, whereas when I started this video, I'm pretty sure I was getting closer to 60. So maybe I've been measuring the wrong stats. Um, I'm going to mark down that the sim speed did not change, but I'm also going to go back to each scenario and measure the CPU load, because I think maybe uh, we can actually get more from that than we can from the... Uh, from the sim speed. So let me run back through all the tests real quick and verify that the, uh, or, or check this, check the CPU load just to see if things have actually changed. All right, after running through all of the different scenarios once again, I actually have a different outlook on things um, after recording the other stats. Ah, <laughs> let me get back up to my perch real quick. Um, okay, so what I recorded is I recorded the GPU load, I recorded the CPU load for rendering, the CPU load for the thread, and the CPU load for the sim, and I also recorded my frames. So uh, one thing that I noticed is that on each of the different scenarios, the frames went down uh, somewhat significantly, um, more significantly uh, with the exaggerated one, but not as much from this one to the next one. So so my frames for this normal one are actually closer to 80, 80 to 90. So I get 80 to 90 frames just running around on this one. One other notable thing is that the CPU load for the thread is only around 160. I mean, you can see it kind of jumping around, not the server thread, but the actual thread here. Let me just look at the, the sky so you can see it. The actual thread is kind of running around 160 to 150, uh, that sort of thing. The GPU load and the CPU load uh, for rendering don't actually matter that much, and the CPU load for sim also don't seem to matter that much. Just keep an eye on the CPU load for thread and then know that my frames right now are around 90 frames. Now loading into our non-excessive world of, uh, of using the, uh, the six-sided conveyors, you'll, the first thing you'll notice is the thread CPU load. You can see it fluctuating between, uh, it goes down to as low as 170 and up to as high as like 390. Uh, so where that was before, just sitting at around 160, now it's going up all the way to 370. And I have to imagine, because the only, the only difference is the six-sided conveyors. They're both the same world. But the only difference is that we have the six-sided conveyors in this one and only the two-sided ones there. So it's definitely causing a load on the thread CPU. The other, the other CPU, like the sim CPU and render CPU and the GPU load, aren't actually that changed. Um, the other thing is that my frames are actually much lower. Uh, I have only around 60 to 70 frames instead of the, uh, the 80 to 90 that we were getting before. So it is causing a strain on my system, uh, even though the sim speed is not quite affected. Over in the excessive world, where you'll notice we have multiple of the same kind of base, all doing the different things. We also have multiple of these giant bases, the other ones down there. Uh, let's get back to our standing spot where we've been standing, just so we can look at the stats as they normally are. So the most obvious thing in this world is that the frames are cut in half. We're at 30 frames right now. So just by standing here, we're getting only half of the frames that we were getting in the other six-sided world and about a third of what we were getting in the two-sided world. You'll also notice the thread CPU is up where it was with the, uh, the other six-sided world as well. Um, one thing that's odd, and I don't know an explanation for this, but the, the render CPU load is actually higher a little bit. Uh, where the, in the other worlds it was 70%, now it's 87%, and also the GPU load is a little bit lower. So I don't know what's causing that. The GPU load in the other two worlds is around 40 to 50, and the GPU load here is only uh, 20. The render GPU load, that is. So I don't know what's causing that, but maybe, I don't know, maybe some sort of lag. Um, but I think we can finally safely answer the question of do these conveyors cause lag? All right, I went back to the normal six-sided world for the outro, uh, but we can finally answer the question we set off to ask. Do these six-sided conveyors cause lag? And the answer is yes, sort of. They don't actually lag your sim speed at all. Um, even after using all of these, and in fact, even in the excessive world, our sim speed was hovering at 1 to 1.02. Uh, what they do do, on the other hand, though, is they do lower your frame rate. I don't know how this will affect a server, you're playing on a server, but in a standard world, they do not lower your, uh, your sim speed. They do lower your frame rate a little bit, and a lot of it, in fact, if you're going the excessive route. But what I can say for sure is that 99% of people are not putting this many uh, conveyors on a grid. So honestly, if you're using this amount of conveyors right here, 
There's no sweat. You're, it, it won't cause, like, the only change we notice is when we added this many conveyors. So here's my recommendation. If you're building on a single grid, don't really worry about if you're excessively using these standard conveyors, because look how many we put here. Look at all of these conveyors. There are, there are thousands. There are thousands of conveyors in here. This is, like, this is not just a shell. The app, like, it's all conveyors everywhere. <laughs> well, not anymore. Now it's, now it's a little bit block. But, um, yeah, I can honestly say that if you're playing on a normal survival world, you do not have to worry about excessively using conveyors like this. They very minorly affect your game, and they do not affect the sim speed whatsoever, at least as, for, as far as these tests go. Um, so that's, I think, where we're going to leave it off. Um, if you guys want to see a bonus thing, stick around in a couple of minutes. I'll show you a bonus little thing, or you can skip to it in the video. That's fine. Um, if you guys like this video, please hit the like button. Uh, comments, put any, any suggestions that you have about future Space Busters episodes, and also any gripes that you might have with this one if you think that I missed anything, or if you think that uh, I missed any test cases. Um, pretty much I just figured let's put a bunch of conveyors down and hope that if we run materials through them they will uh, they will cause lag but honestly I mean we have things connected everywhere this is I mean this isn't connected to that but I don't think that that causes that much we can real quick run a connection there and see if that changes anything um, nope frame rate is the same and I don't think the CPU load has gone up or down any so yeah I think we're we're honestly fine just don't worry about it if you're if you're running a single world. Okay guys, that is the end of the video. Again, I hope you liked it and I will see you in the next episode of Space Busters. Now, for any of you who are sticking around for the bonus thing, here's what we're going to do next. Uh, so one thing some people do, instead of putting conveyors everywhere like this, is they actually put cargo containers. So let's do a quick test to find out what would happen if you replace all of these conveyors with cargo containers instead. Cutting to when that's built. Okay, everybody, welcome to a world where you just have a bunch of materials for cargo containers and too much time on your hands. This is the same thing, but everything is a cargo container. If, oh, well, that's how you probably crash the game. Uh, I don't know, you can see the numbers there. There are 10,599 of them uh, in here. So, um, so yeah, that's that. Uh, sim speed's still at 1.02. Um, the only big thing I noticed, the uh, the frame rate's the same as it was for the um, the six-sided one. So frame rate's around 60, 65, roughly in that general area. The only thing I noticed was that the thread CPU load seems to be way higher, or not way higher, but just like a little bit higher than the uh, than it was for the uh, the conveyors. Um, for the conveyors, it was kind of hovering between 200 and 300, uh, maybe up to 350, 370. Now it's hovering between 300 and 400. I mean, currently it's at, at like 200, but I've seen it go into the 400s, um, just kind of like chilling here. See, it went into 400 there for a second. So I think the uh, CPU load has gotten a little bit worse with the uh, with the containers. And also, if you, I mean, if you try to open a container, you get this this uh, game crash, maybe? No. Is it going to come? Okay, it actually came back. You get this momentary amount of lag. And in fact, that lag persists if you try to navigate the menus. Not in here, obviously, but in the... Uh, in the oh, I've done it again. <laughs> oh, no. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if the recording starts having trouble there for all the... Uh, oh, my God. Look at our... Look, look at our sim speed. Just from going in here. It's 0 0.08. Oh, my God. Okay, I would definitely not recommend uh, doing that in that case. But... That was your little bonus scene right there, just a little bonus where we, uh, we put cargo containers instead to the test. So if you're one of the people who uses cargo containers instead of conveyors, uh, thinking that they won't cause as much lag, then uh, then you are wrong. They cause roughly the, sa the same amount, if not a little bit more. But again, I would not worry, to be honest. Unless you're doing this many cargo containers, I would not worry. Just, just like, don't worry about excessively using them unless you're building a Goliath of sorts, then worry. That's pretty much all there is to it. Alright guys, that's the end of this video. I'll see you guys in the next one.